Hi and welcome to another live class, class 15 of my intermediate level English course. Um, normally I do the classes on Tuesday and Thursday but yesterday I didn't get a chance and I think also there was a football match on um, so this is we're doing the class today and probably another class tomorrow so before we begin let's see who we have in the chat um, we have Javier um, I liked your video about describing people thanks Javier we've got Marcus um, we've got Stalin Morelos where are you from Stalin we've got Viviana uh, we've got Edison we've got Garen we've got Gamma um, who else if your video is a little bit blurred remember to change in the settings to because I'm watching on the monitor and actually mine has gone right down the quality is right down to um, 144p which is very low quality so if you if your video is blurred and you're watching live just in your options this is on the computer um, here change the quality settings so that because otherwise you won't be able to see the text we we'll put it on 720 because um, sometimes people complain they say they can't see the text so just change your settings actually it's gone back uh, so today in this class what we're going to do uh, who else we got we've got Wilma yeah we've got Omar and we've got Dennis we've got Neri and we've got Bali speaking Spanish so today in this class we are going to be looking at some more modal verbs um, I think in the last class the last class was modal verbs two um, today we're going to look at more modal verbs let's just get this the right size not too small maybe there um, we're going to look at modal verbs and today we're going to be looking at uh, modal verbs for making deductions modal verbs for making deductions modal verbs for making deductions um, here we have making deductions using must may might and can't um, these are all modal verbs in the last class we saw modal verbs um, and we saw must and have to I think so in the last class we saw that we can use must to talk about obligation for example we saw the sentence I must go now which is like synonymous with I have to go now in this uh, in these sentences the uh, the modal verb must is being used for obligation but in this class today we're going to be looking at another use of must using must to talk about um, making deductions making deductions so uh, let's begin with some examples here I have uh, a photograph of this man here uh, I don't know anything about this person I don't know anything about this person this is a photo that I got off the internet um, so I'm going to make some deductions about this person using English we've got Sonia from Catalonia hi and Ronald from Peru BTS from Argentina Eduardo from Mexico and um, Ma Malira from Mexico I think Jenny from Jenny from Colombia and somebody being a nuisance so uh, goodbye if I can just get rid of that person okay let's carry on um, so we're making deductions about this person uh, we don't know anything about this person so here's some of the language we can use we can say he must be rich 
he must be rich. Um, I don't know if he's rich, but he looks rich, he's got a nice car, he's wearing a suit, um, so I presume that he's rich. So I can say, he must be rich, using the auxiliary verb or the modal verb, must, plus the base verb. He must be. So when we say he must be, when we use must like this in English, it means we're almost 100% certain. We're 100% certain. Tania says, I don't see it. What don't you see, Tania? I think you mean, I can't see it. If you can't see it, what can't you see? Because I'm watching on my monitor and I can see it. It, maybe your resolution is too low, so just change it in the options. Um, so, when we say in English, um, yeah, as Juan says, change your resolution in your options. He must be rich. When we say he must be rich, I'm going to make it bigger. He must be rich. That means that I am... 99.9% .9 certain or very certain that he is rich. He's got an expensive car. He looks like he's got expensive clothes. Another deduction that I can make about this person is, let's try and make these bigger for people who have low resolution. He may be a businessman. He may be a businessman. This time I'm using the modal may, may to make a deduction. When we say may in English, it's like it's a possibility. It's a possibility. I don't know if he's a businessman, but he may be a businessman because he's wearing a suit. Um, he looks like he could be a businessman. He may be a businessman. So. If I say he must be rich, that means I'm very certain that he's rich. If I say he may be a businessman, I'm making a deduction, but it's uh, not a strong deduction. It's a possibility. And the same thing, yeah, it's the, a lot of people are saying about the resolution of the image. The resolution of the image on the upload is 720p is high definition the problem is the settings on your device on your computer or on your cell phone you need to make sure that this that you are watching the video in 720p high definition um, 720p high definition as i've mentioned earlier in uh, other classes, what happens is that you, if you have a slow, if you are watching the class live and you have a slow internet connection, then, um, uh, then you, the, the YouTube will automatically downgrade your video. Um, somebody, Stalin says it's 720p. I'm watching it here in 720p and I don't have any problems. Maybe I'm not watching it at 720p. Yeah, here, right here, I can show you my laptop. Uh, I show you this screen on my laptop, which is in 720p, and you can see it very clearly. If we can just focus the camera on it. Um, well, it's difficult to actually focus the camera, but I can read that text and my eyesight is very bad. Uh, so down at the bottom here, I have this video setting on 720p high definition. If you put it on 720p and it's still bad, uh, here, you know, this text is 100% readable for me and I, I have very bad eyesight. These glasses are very powerful. So if you can't see it, then um, there's really, it's nothing I can do about it. You need to make sure 
you're watching it in 720p and that you have a good internet connection. Uh, the upload is 720p. So let's return to the class. Let's return to the class. Um, so maybe he may be a businessman. He may be a businessman is, is a possibility. And the next sentence we have is using might. He might be arriving at work. He might be arriving at work. So this again is a possibility. In fact, may and might have the same meaning. Here we're using the modal verb might and here we're using may. The difference is only the level of formality. He may be a businessman is more formal than saying he might be a businessman. He might be arriving at work. He may be arriving at work. It's synonymous only may is a little bit more formal. So again when I say he might be arriving at work this is a possibility. It says, I don't know that he's arriving at work, but it's a possibility. And finally, the last deduction we have is using he can't. He can't be in the UK. So here, this is a negative deduction. I'm saying something in the negative. I'm saying that he can't be in the UK. It's impossible that he is in the UK. The UK, what does the UK mean? The UK is the United Kingdom. And in the United Kingdom, the steering wheel, this is a steering wheel, is on the right hand side of the car. The right hand side of the car, I think, maybe I'm confused now actually. Is this uh, on the right? Yeah, this is the same as the car here. So in Mexico, so yeah, the, the steering wheel is on the other side of the car, I think. So he can't be in the UK because this is like the car here in Mexico. The steering wheel is on the left hand side. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. In Mexico, in France, in Germany, in Spain, the steering wheel is on the um, left hand side of the car so we say and in the United States so we say this car this car is left hand drive because in most countries in most countries people drive on the left I think yeah no the right sorry <laughs> the right very confusing but in the UK let's move this up a bit a minute sorry in the UK the cars are right hand drive also in Japan and Australia and some other countries and people drive on the right, I think. No, sorry, drive on the left. Very confusing. Yeah, it's a long time since I've driven in the UK. So, uh, so I, here I'm making an assumption. I can see that this car has the steering wheel on the left-hand side, so he can't be in the UK. So here, actually now I've lost um, one, this one here, let's move this back down here. Try and get all these down here. So here, um, this is an assumption, I'm making an assumption, he can't be in the UK. This is like the opposite of he must be. With must, I am 199% certain that he's rich and with can't, I'm 99% certain that he is not in the UK. So these phrases here, these modal verbs here, must, may, might and can't, we can use for making assumptions, making assumptions or making deductions, 
making assumptions and making deductions. Let's continue with the next page. Those were examples. And on the next page I have some of the rules here. Making deductions using must, may, might and can't. Must, may, might and can't. So the first rule, when you are certain, when you are certain that something is true, you can use must. When you are certain something is true, you can use must. I think what I'll do is um, move these ones here to another page because a lot of people are complaining about the uh, text. So let's move that to another page. No, that's not it. Um, put that on the next page. Yeah, I didn't copy it. Right, we'll do that in a minute. Let's go back, sorry. Uh, so when you, let's go back to must, when you are certain something is true, use must. For example, he just ran a marathon. He must be exhausted. He must be exhausted. So we're using must. We don't know that he is exhausted. But if somebody just ran a marathon, which is 42 point two kilometers we assume or we deduce that he is exhausted exhausted means very tired yeah uh, Stalin says must is affirmative yeah must is used in positive sentences the opposite of must is can't we'll look at that in a minute um, so he just ran a marathon he must be exhausted I don't know that he's exhausted is an assumption. Um, Ray drives a Tesla. He must be rich. I don't know if Ray is rich, but I assume he's rich because the Tesla is a very expensive car. So if somebody is driving a Tesla, I can say, oh, he has a Tesla. He must be rich. I'm 99% certain that he's rich. So when you are certain that something is true, you can say, you can use must, must plus the modal verb. Um, okay, let's have a look now then at may and might, may and might. I think I'll just move this page up here and try and make it bigger so people can see it. Um, so when you think something is possible, you can use may or might, may or might. Let's see if I can make this bigger. You can use may or might. When you think something is possible, use may or might, which is another modal verb. Remember that all we've seen modal verbs before. We saw modal verbs in the last class. When you have a modal verb, it is always followed by the base verb. Don't put, we'll look at the structure in a minute, but don't put here, we don't want to put here to. That is wrong. Some people put to there. It's not correct to put to there. It's he may be or he might be. It's modal verb plus base verb. That applies, always applies to all the modal verbs. So when you use um, may or might, you are making an assumption, but it's a possibility. You're not sure. Harry is not at home. He may be at work or he might be at work. Uh, I don't know if he's at work, but there's a possibility that he is at work. If I say, like we saw before, if I say, if I say, um, he must be at work. That means I'm very sure using must. Using must, I'm 100% certain, or 99% certain, that he's at work. But if I say he may be at work, 
it's a possibility, I don't know what a possibility is, maybe 35% sun. And this one here, I must be at work, is 99% sun. You, I don't think you can ever be 100% sure of anything, so it's, you can't say 100%. So that's the difference, and might, as I said earlier, is the same, but might is less formal. May sounds more formal. That's the only difference between may and might. Uh, have I got any more examples? Yeah, it's uh, she hasn't sent me an email. Well, she may have forgotten. She may have forgotten. I think here too, yeah, maybe I should talk about the pronunciation. She may have forgotten. Actually, this one here is, uh, maybe this is a bad example because actually this one here I just realized is a past modal. But um, I don't want to talk about that at the moment. I should have put a better example. Uh, she may have forgotten. I think it's okay here because we've still got may plus uh, have, which is the base verb, plus we've got the past participle. Probably it's a bad example, but it's a, an assumption about the past, which probably we'll look at in another class. But it's the same meaning. It's still an assumption. It's still a deduction. I don't know if she's forgotten, but it's a possibility that she's forgotten. She may have forgotten. And the pronunciation of this one would be, she may have forgotten. Um, Good. So the last one we want to look at now here is um, can't, which is really is like the opposite of must. The opposite of must. So when you use um, can't, when you are certain something is not true, use can't. Barry can't be ill because I just saw him at the gym. Um, ill means um, sick. Sick. That means uh, if, you, if somebody is sick or ill, they can't work. They need to see a doctor. If you're sick or ill, you need to see a doctor. So if you're sick or ill, sick and ill are synonymous. Sick. Ill is synonymous. If you're sick or ill, then you don't normally go to the gym. So I'm, if I saw Barry in the gym, if I saw Barry in the gym, I can make the assumption or the deduction that he is not ill. I'm 99% certain that he's not ill. Barry can't be ill because I saw him at the gym. Again, using the modal, this time it's a negative, cannot, but we don't say cannot, we say can't, can't be ill because I saw him at the gym. Or another example, they can't be Chinese, they can't be Chinese because they are speaking Japanese. So going back to this example here, these are the three or four different words we saw today. He must be at work, I'm 99% certain. He may be at work, I'm 35% certain. He can't be at work, I'm 99% certain, like the first example, but it's a negative. In this example, he must be at work. I'm 99% certain that he's at work. And in this example, I'm 99% certain that he isn't at work. It's a negative. So must, can't be is the opposite of must be. And may and might is just, are just possibilities. Good. Um, Let's have a look. I'm just looking at the chat for a minute. Let's go to the next page. Um, so here we have some more notes. Let's just 
lost some pages here, I think. Oh, what happened to all my pages? Let's go back a bit. Um, we just did that one. Maybe there's some more stuff on here. They did have some more examples. No, I've lost that one. So um, we saw that one already. Where's the other one? This one here. So here are some notes. Um, with deductions, the negative of must is can't. So we need to remember that these modals have different meanings. For example, um, we saw in the last class that must has another meaning, which is I must go. I must go now. That's not the same thing. I must go now. Here we're using must for um, obligation which is a different meaning. And I can't speak uh, Chinese. Here I'm using can't for ability or negative ability. These are different meanings from the meanings that we are looking at today. These modal verbs have different meanings. In this sentence, I must go now, must is being used for obligation. In this sentence, I can't speak Chinese. Can't is being used for ability or negative ability. But in these two sentences, must and can't are being used to make deductions or assumptions. So in this sense, they are the opposite. He must be at home, his car is outside his house. He must be at home, his car is outside his house. This is an assumption. And the opposite is, he can't be at home, his car isn't outside his house. He must be at home, his car is outside the house. I'm 99% certain that he's at home. He can't be at home, his car isn't outside his house. Um, I'm 99% certain that he isn't at home. Down here we have some more examples with may and might. The opposites of may and might, let's move that one up, hold on. The opposite of may and might is um, may not and might not. So the opposites of may and might are may not and might not. Example, it's 1 p.m. he may be at lunch. It's 1 p.m. He may not be in the office because he's having lunch. Uh, additionally, we can say, is 1 p.m. He might be at lunch. Remember, we can say, it's 1 p.m. He may be at lunch. Or, it's 1 p.m. He might be at lunch. It's the same only. Remember, might is less formal. Might is less formal. It's 1 p.m. He may not be in the office because he's having lunch. It's 1 p.m. He might not be in the office because he's having lunch. It's the opposite. The opposite of may is may not, and the opposite of might is might not. Good. Um, I don't think I had anything else on this screen. I had some more information that I seem to have lost. Let's go to the next page. That page, for some strange reason, is empty. Let's go to the next page. That page too appears to be empty. I think I've added, ah, here is the one I was looking for, yeah. The structure, the structure is very easy. As with all the modal verbs, this is the order of the words. This is the order of the words. Um, first of all, we need to have the subject. Uh, in this is I, you, he, she, it, we, they. Here we're using the uh, subject pronouns. The next thing we need is the modal verb. These rules apply to all modal verbs. We've seen other modal verbs in level two. Sorry, I just skipped the page. We've seen other modal verbs in level two. Um, we've seen can. What other modal verbs have we seen? Let's just quickly try and remember some of the modals that we've seen. We've seen can before, for example, I can speak English, it's ability. We've seen, we saw in the last class 
I must go now for obligation. Um, what else would we see? I think we saw should in level two. Um, I should or you should, let's change the subject, you should do your homework. Um, what else have we seen? I think we've seen some other modal verbs. Uh, those are the ones I can remember. Oh, will. We've seen will for future simple. I, um, he will do his homework. Uh, it doesn't matter. All the modal verbs that we've seen previously and the modal verbs that we're looking at today, which is he must be at home, he may be at home, doesn't let let's use a different verb here, he may um, have a laptop, I don't know if he has a laptop or not, I just wanted to change the main verb and not use be all the time, he might to um, live in Spain. These are all examples. Sorry, I need to move this because you can't see it. He may live, he might live in Spain. He can't be American. These are examples of modals that we're looking today for assumption or deduction. These ones, all of these are examples of using modal verbs. So whenever you use a modal verb, a special auxiliary verb in English, it's always the same structure. Always the same structure. You are going to use the subject followed by the modal verb followed by the base verb. Always the same. If it's a negative, um, like the last one, can't, we're going to put the word not after the modal verb. So it's always the same structure. Subject, modal verb, base verb. Remember, never ever put to here. That is wrong. Never ever put to here. All the modal verbs are always followed by the base verb. Must go, must do, will do, must be, may have, might live, uh, can't be. All the verbs are in the base form. So this is the structure. Very good. Let me just check the, te the chat for a minute. Uh, I'm, I might be in Ecuador. So Stalin has put up there uh, a sentence which has a mistake in it. A mistake. He's written... Put what he's written here. I can't put it. I, um, what's he put? I, I'm, might, in Ecuador. So who can tell me the problem with this? Who can tell me the problem with this? What is the problem with this sentence? Is this following the structure, subject, modal, base verb? I might in Ecuador. Who can tell me what is the problem with this sentence in the chat? Who can tell me what is the problem with this sentence? Base verb says one. Who can write this correctly? Who can write this correctly? This is wrong because nobody's given me the right answer. But first of all, here he has the verb be. And then he has the modal verb. And here he has no main verb. So what he, I think what he wanted to say is... I might be in Ecuador. I might be in Ecuador. This is the this is now it is grammatically correct. You cannot put here the verb be before the modal verb. Here he has the verb be in the present simple before the modal verb. That is not how we do it. We need to use the modal verb plus the base form of the main verb. Now the other problem, 
Um, the other problem is that this is a straight, grammatically now, this is correct, I might be in Ecuador, but that's a bit of a strange thing to say because the only situation where you would say that is if you wanted people to guess. I mean, why would you say, I might be in Ecuador means it's possible that I am in Ecuador. Well, I know where I am. I can't say to you I might be in Mexico. I know that I am in Mexico. So if I wanted you to guess where I was, maybe I would say to you, you say to me, where are you? Well, I might be in, in Ecuador, I might be in Mexico, guess. But normally you wouldn't make an assumption about yourself like that. You could make an, I could make an assumption about somebody in the chat. In the chat, I have um, Tania Maria Garcia. I don't know where Tania is. I don't know where she is. So I could say, well, she's probably in Latin America. I'd say, um, she may be in Mexico. I don't know if she's in Mexico. Tania may be in Mexico. It's an assumption. Tania may be in Mexico, but I don't know if she's in Mexico or not. But make an assumption about yourself. Sometimes you could make an assumption about yourself. If you um, felt very hot or something or your stomach was hurting, you could say, oh, my stomach is hurting. I might be ill. I might be ill. I might be ill. Remember, ill means sick. Very good. So let's continue. Uh, my pages are mixed up here today. I don't know what's happened to my pages. Um, I think we can continue. Let's continue with these questions. Let's continue with these questions. Here, the, I've got two parts, two parts. Uh, maybe I need to move it, first of all, because you can't see it. Let's go over here. Let's, um, maybe it's better to move the video, I think. Let's move the video up there. Um, and move this one down. Make it bigger. I think you might be able to see that. Okay, here I have um, two part. These are the two halves to the sentences. So you've got to join the two halves. Basically, in the first one I have, he must be in his 80s. What is the second part of this sentence from the list down here? How can I finish this sentence? How can I finish this sentence? He must be in his 80s. He must be in his 80s. He must be in his 80s. Which one do I need here? She hasn't seen me for a long time. Everybody has one these days. He must be joking. He likes comedies. He sometimes works late. He retired 20 years ago. He's nearly 40. She never speaks to anyone. He has to get up early. He must be in his 80s. He's nearly 40. No. That doesn't make sense. He must be in his 80s. Which is the correct one here? He must be in his 80s. He must be in his 80s. He would have the air carry on. Very good, yeah. He must be in his 80s because he retired 20 years ago. He must be in his 80s. He retired 20 years ago. He retired 20 years ago. Let's make this bigger. We can go right out to there, I think. He retired 20 years ago. Good. Number two, he can't be a student. He can't be a student. He can't be a student, which is the correct one here. He 
He can't be a student. What's the correct one here? Anybody got the correct answer? He can't be a student. He has to get up early tomorrow. Why? Students sometimes get up early. He's nearly 40, Nora. Yeah, he's nearly 40. He's nearly 40. He can't be a student. He's nearly 40. Well, it's possible. There are sometimes mature students, but let's put that there. He can't be a student. He's nearly 40. It's an assumption. It's a deduction. She may not remember me. She may not remember me. Matteo, yeah, congratulations, Matteo. It's the correct answer. Yeah, he can't be a student. He's nearly 40. What is happening? There's a person flooding the chat with messages. Goodbye. Um, Tania says it's the first sentence. Yeah, very good. She may not remember me. She may not remember me. She hasn't seen me for a long time. She hasn't seen me for a long time. She may not remember me. She hasn't seen me for a long time. Very good. He might like this movie. 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 He likes comedies. Very good. Yeah, he might like this movie. He likes comedies. I don't know if he's going to like the movie. But he li it's a comedy and he likes movies. So there's a possibility that he will like this one. It's a assumption. She must be shy. She must be shy. She must be shy. Shy. Shy means a person who feels uncomfortable in social situations, like an introverted person, a shy person. She never speaks to anyone. Very good. She never speaks to anyone. She must be shy. She never speaks to anybody. She never speaks to anybody. Good. Uh, he can't be serious. 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 He must be joking, Juan. Very good. And uh, Coyote. He must be joking. Let's get that there. He must be joking. He might be in bed already. He might be in bed already. He might be in bed already. He has to get up early tomorrow. Very good, yeah. He has to get up early tomorrow. He has to get up early tomorrow. Um, let's put that one there. You can still see these. Um, so let's make these blue. So he, he can't be serious. He must be joking. Um, he might be in bed already. He has to get up early tomorrow. Uh, he might not be home yet. He might not be home yet. He might not be home yet. He sometimes works late. Very good, yeah. He sometimes works late. And he must have a mobile cell phone. 
uh, sorry, yeah, here I need to explain this. He must have a mobile phone or he must have a cell phone. Yeah, but mobile phone is British English and cell phone in American English. He must have a mobile phone and I don't think anybody's going to, uh, I think I might have missed, uh, I, yeah, there's only one option left. Yeah, there's only one option left. So I'm going to give you the answer. It's um, this one here. Everybody has one these days. The final answer. So let me read the sentences one more to you so you can hear the pronunciation. The first one is, um, he must be in his 80s. He retired 20 years ago. He can't be a student. He's nearly 40. She may not remember me. She hasn't seen me for a long time. He might like this movie. He likes comedies. She must be shy. She never speaks to anyone. He can't be serious. He must be joking. He might be in bed already. He has to get up early tomorrow. He might not be at home yet. He sometimes works late. He must have a mobile phone. Everybody has one these days. Or he must have a cell phone. Everybody has one these days. Very good. Let's go. I think I've got some more exercises somewhere, but I need to find out what page they are on. Um, because I'm got mixed up with my pages. Maybe it's this one here. What happened to that text? Um, I can't see it. Ah, okay, this one here. This one here. So here I have, um, I don't know if you can see that because my video is covering it. I think I'll have to move the video again. This video is all over the place. Uh, put it up there. And let's move this uh, text over there a bit. I think maybe there. Hopefully you can see it there. Uh, I think I might have to make this video a bit smaller actually to fit this on. Let's make this a little bit smaller. I think about there, yeah. So here I have a text. Let me read this text to you and then we're going to try and make some assumptions about a person. You are a landlord or a landlady and one of your tenants has not paid her rent this week. Sorry, this here should say, oof. You are a landlord or a landlady. A landlord is a person who rents a property, a man who rents a property. A landlord is a man who rents a property. Remember, uh, if you don't understand the word, just check out the dictionary. I usually recommend the Oxford Learner's Dictionary, which is online. Uh, it's a very good dictionary. We can just go in there, and if you don't know a word, you can just say landlord, and it's going to give you the, de the definition there. A personal company from, from whom you rent a room. And a landlady is the same thing, but it's a woman. So remember, if you don't understand a word when you're learning English at this level, just use a dictionary or just, you know, if you've got your cell phone, just Google the words. It's very easy. You can actually use the voice can actually say the word and Google will look for it. So, you are a landlord or landlady, sorry, I've gone too big. You're a, la a landlord or landlady and one of your tenants has not paid her rent this week. A tenant is the opposite from a landlord. We can go back to the dictionary and we can look up tenant. Uh, sorry, I spelt it wrong because actually it's got to uh, one end. A person who pays rent for the use of a room. It's the opposite of a landlord. So remember this dictionary, Oxford Learner's Dictionary. And also here, 
you have the pronunciation in British English and American English. Um, so uh, let's go back to this. Um, you are a landlord or landlady and one of your tenants has not paid her rent this week. You have not heard her in her room for two days and you are worried. You decide to go into her room to try and find out what happened to her. In her room you find the following things. A student card, a lot of books about law, an ashtray full of cigarette ends. An ashtray is a place where you put the cigarettes. A teach yourself Spanish book. A photo of her on a beach with a young man. They are kissing. Just need a space there, sorry. A fragment of a note which says, I think we should just be friends. Two empty vodka bottles, an empty bottle of paracetamol. So the person is missing. We don't know anything about this person, but from these things we can make assumptions. Let's copy this here. All the things we found in the room of this person. Let's go to a new page. We don't have much time left. This is what we know about this person. Let's try and make some deductions about this person. Let's try and make deductions about this person. So the first thing we found was a student card. A student card. I think we can make this a bit bigger. What deductions can you make if you find a student card? Who can write a deduction in the chat? Who can make a deduction? We don't know anything about this person, but if they have a student card, we can assume. What can we assume? What can we deduce about this person? Anybody? Can anybody make an, a, a deduction about this person? If she has a student card, what deduction can you make? What deduction can you make? Anybody? Well, the chat seems dead. There are people in there, but either nobody has the answer so I'll make a deduction. If a person has a student card, we could say, for example, that she must be a student. That's a deduction. I don't know if she's a student, but she has a student card. Yes, yeah, Sonia now has just um, put in the chat, she must be a student, okay? I don't know if she's a student, but I'm pretty sure she is a student if in her room she has a student card. I'm very certain. She has a lot of books about law. She has a lot of books about law. What can we say? She has a lot of books about law. A lot of books about law. Can anybody make a deduction? about that. Why? Why do I think she's a student or why does she have a lot of books about law? I'm not sure what, the, what you mean by why. She has a lot of books about law. She's a student. Make a deduction. She must be a lawyer. Okay? Um, well, she's a student, so I don't think she, she must, somebody put she must be a lawyer, which means you are 100% certain that she's a lawyer or 99% certain she's a lawyer, but she's a student. So I don't think that that's a fair deduction. I think Lewis, thank, yeah, thanks Lewis. Lewis has put a better deduction. He said she must be a law student. I think that's better. She must be a law student. 
we don't know, but she's a student and she has a lot of books about law. Um, she, the next one, she has an ashtray full of cigarette ends. Ashtray is a place where you put cigarettes. What can we say? What can we say? She has an ashtray full of cigarette ends. Who can make a deduction? Who can make a deduction? Who can make a deduction? Can anybody make a deduction? She has an ashtray full of cigarette ends. She must be not smoking. She, he should stop smoking. Well, those are not deductions. Um, she sh he should stop smoking is a woman, but let's um, so so who said that Lewis Lewis said she should stop smoking which is correct but that's not a deduction that's a recommendation using the modal verb should it's a recommendation today we don't want to look at recommendations we want to make deductions if she has an ashtray full of cigarette ends she may be a smoker very good she may be a smoker says vivian she must be addicted yeah good those two are deductions vivian says she may be a smoker which means there's a possibility she's a smoker um, lewis says she must be addicted yeah she must be addicted to cigarettes i think she must be addicted to cigarettes um, i think it's better to say if she she i would say she must be a smoker uh, viviana said she may be a smoker but i think she's more likely that she's um a smoker I think is a you know it's a very strong possibility um, if sh that she is a smoker so I would say she must be a smoker um, what else have we got there is a folk she's she has a book teach yourself Spanish what assumptions can you make about that she must be a Spanish student yeah well uh, I don't think it's correct if you say she's a Spanish student is incorrect if you say she's a Spanish student that means she is a student from Spain I don't think you want to say she's a student from Spain. A student from Spain already speaks Spanish, so they would not have a teach yourself Spanish book. What you need to say is she must be a student of Spanish. You can't say, well, you can say she must be a Spanish student, but that means she's a student from Spain. We don't want to say that. A student from Spain would not be have a Spanish teach yourself Spanish book she must be a student of Spanish or maybe we've already said she must be a law student so maybe it's better to say she must be learning Spanish what do we have next what do we have next we have a photo of her on the beach with a young man they are kissing what deductions can you make about this? She must be a Spanish speaker. She might have a boy. You said she might be, but here she, we could say she must have. Well, you said might. She might have a boyfriend. Sorry, friend. She might have a boyfriend. I, I would say if she's a photo of, with her with, with a guy and they are kissing, I would say she must have a boyfriend. That's what I would say. Strong possibility. 
She must have a boyfriend. Yeah, Javier put that. They must be married. We must are. Remember, um, Sonia put they must are. So the problem here is that this here is followed by the verb be in the present. And we don't want that. We want the base verb. Always follow the modal with the base verb. They must be must be married. Yeah, I guess that could be another assumption, but maybe, okay, I would say they might be married, but remember that she lives alone in the room, so I think it's more likely that the one up here is the better assumption. She must have a boyfriend. The next one, the next one, a fragment of a note which says I think we should just be friends very sad very sad very sad in English when somebody says to you let's be friends or let's just be friends or just friends just friends, it's normally very sad. Has anybody ever said to you, just friends, very sad. And when somebody does that, we say, you are in the friend zone. Yeah. So uh, Gonzalo put, they must not be in love. But remember the negative. First of all, the mistake there is the negative of must in this sense is can't. Maybe uh, we would say, can somebody think of another assumption from the note? Can somebody think of another assumption that you can make from the note? Anybody? Well, maybe you could say, he can't love her. Yeah, somebody else has put Nora. She might be sad. Oh, I would say, she must be sad. She might be broken hearted. Yeah, she might. That's a very good one. Yeah, she might be broken hearted. If somebody says to you, um, if you are in love with somebody and they say, just friends, probably you are going to be broken hearted. Next one, uh, two empty vodka bottles. Two empty vodka bottles. I think we're doing, well, I should have finished actually. Two empty vodka bottles and an empty bottle of paracetamol. This is, she must be a drinker. Yeah, very good. You can put this up here, I think here. Oh, running out of space. Uh, let's move that over there and put it down here. She must be a drinker. Sorry. Uh, maybe she split up. I could say she must have split. This is actually a past one that we saw earlier, but I'm going to put it anyway. She must have split with her boyfriend or from her boy. Split up with, I think is better. Split up with her boyfriend or husband. This is uh, like they're separated, split up with. This is actually a past assumption, but I'm going here we're using the structure. She must have followed by the past participle. Uh, we did see an example of that earlier. She can't be drink. That one doesn't make sense. And finally, an empty bottle of paracetamol. That's not good, not good. Um, 
she must be ill, very ill, if you use a whole empty bottle. Maybe she, she can be addicted. I don't know if you can be addicted to paracetamol. She might be suicidal. She might be suicidal. Very sad. She must have got drunk, Javier. Very good, yeah. That's a good one. She must have got very drunk. Okay, well, actually, this class has lasted longer than an hour. I don't like the class to last longer than an hour, but we, um, it did last longer than an hour, so I need to finish. Thank you very much for watching this class and hope to see you. Maybe I'll do another class tomorrow because yesterday I missed one. So I hope to see you maybe tomorrow in the next class. Goodbye and have a good day.